We are not responsible for your behavior. We believe in common sense. No, 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 no crisis, no. Oh, Britain working again with tax cuts and cheese. She won't, she's gone. You're listening to News Talk on Strange But True Radio, episode 4 of 2023 with Philip Jones and Philip Keeler in the UK. On tonight's show in the UK, the ex-Health Secretary Matt Hancock faces embarrassment of leaked WhatsApp messages. And a man missing in the Amazon rainforest has been found alive after a month. He had to eat insects and worms to survive. We are downloadable from wherever you get your podcasts from, including Apple and Google Podcasts, Spotify and Amazon Music. This is News Talk. First, here's what's trending around the world. In Ukraine, Russian reservists are using shovels for hand-to-hand combat. That's according to the UK's Ministry of Defence. They say it's because the Russians now have a severe lack of ammunition. In Mali, two staff for the International Committee of the Red Cross have been kidnapped. The charity said the abduction took place on a road in the northeast of the region, an area which has long been a hotspot for violence by Islamist extremists. In Iraq now, and Christian MPs are attempting to overturn a new law to ban alcohol. Customs officials were given orders on Saturday to enforce the legislation. It became law last month despite opposition. The group of MPs, which has five seats in Iraq's parliament, filed a lawsuit saying it was undemocratic. And in Switzerland, Toblerone is to remove the Matterhorn mountain peak from its packaging when some of the chocolate's production is moved from Switzerland to Slovakia. The pyramid-shaped bar, which mirrors the Alpine peak, will now undergo a labelling revamp. Our top story then in the UK, the ex-health secretary uh, Matt Hancock faces embarrassment of of, uh, leaked WhatsApp messages. The exchanges were leaked by journalist Isabel Oakeshott. Uh, He was given them by Hancock while she was helping to write his COVID diary. Uh, In one of the exchanges to his aides, he said he wanted to frighten the pants off everyone to ensure everyone compiled with uh, COVID-19 restrictions. Uh, You'll remember everyone except, though, uh, Boris Johnson himself and the majority of the Tory party. Uh, Phil, uh, more shame for the Tory party, the Conservatives. What more? What more can go wrong for them? Hancock is, is, is finished, surely. I hope so. In my opinion, he's a slimy little creep. I've heard him... What is equally interesting, I've heard him interviewed on BBC Radio after question time and he just starts using a lot of long words that make no sense at all. And all the, they make no sense at all. And because they're long words, all the uh, BBC journalists were nodding their head in agreement because they didn't want to seem foolish because they didn't really understand what he was saying. Well, in fact, he didn't understand what he was saying. So... (laughs) But he gets away with it, and he knows exactly what he's doing. I, he's a lying little creep, in my opinion. Well, you know, I've seen him lie, and everybody's seen him lie. He lies all day long. And I, I think it's come to a point where we've got to – this has to change. Mm. We need a different form of politics where we have honest politicians. If you lie all the time, you can't get anything done. Because you don't, you spend all your time covering up your mistakes, which is what Johnson was doing. Some MP mentioned, actually, a member of parliament mentioned that they can't have any new policies. They're spending all their time on cover ups. Well, it is. For it's all just, the dreadful things that they do. I turn on Sky News in the morning, and and it's always, it's just always about the Tory Party uh, doing doing silly things. Uh, you know, Hancock, uh, and 
and it's just it's just appalling to see every single day when really they need to be looking at the country's policies on immigration and getting us out of this terrible financial crisis that everyone's in. Well, the, t- the financial crisis was created by Sunak and his chums because <laughs> what they did was they did ridiculous things like, and I've t- said this before, but Microsoft and uh, I believe Microsoft and Apple offered to do a test and trace system for nothing. The Irish did their test and trace system for £760,000 and um, Sunak allocated £37 billion pounds to it. And if that hadn't happened, we wouldn't have the inflation as it is, the other contracts that were rewarded co- co- during COVID were well over f- 15 billion. So it takes the actual amount of money that evaporated into probably the 60s of 60 billion, in excess of 60 billion pounds, which is a huge amount of money. And because that money has just disappeared, it's, it, it's inflationary. I want to talk about addition, Isabel. I- we have Brexit, which is causes masses of problems. Someone told me that. Uh, recently that it's no point getting into into building projects because you can't make money in the way that you used to because the prices of the raw materials still keep on increasing and therefore you can't price the projects building and we need houses I want to talk about Isabel Oakenshot then. So uh, she is um, the lady who's responsible for uh, doing his uh, his writing, his COVID diary. Uh, they've basically been doing it together, but she's been putting the words uh, to the paper. She's had access uh, to uh, Hancock's uh, Twitter, not Twitter, WhatsApp feed, uh, and has and has has released all these messages uh, to to the media. Uh, which, uh, as a journalist, I mean, I'm a journalist, I'm a broadcast trained journalist, and you think, um, I, I think it's, there, there is part of me thinks that the public has a right to see these messages. There is another part of me who thinks, actually, she's done the wrong thing. What do you think? It depends on what her relationship is with Hancock. If she has obtained that information for the purposes of writing a book, that's one thing. If she obtained the information as a journalist, that's another. So as a journalist, it's your obligation almost, I imagine, to release information that you obtain as a journalist. But if you're given the information in good faith um, to write a book, then you are really doing the dirty on Hancock if you by releasing the information, because it's a different scenario. Yeah, that's the way I look at it. So yeah. this woman who's done this is not to be trusted, but she's done it before. I'm told. Okay, okay, that's interesting. Um, and, and actually, I, I do recognise, I do recognise her name from a few places. Um, we had a Twitter poll this week uh, on our on our Twitter feed at Strange BTI. You might want to have a look at it later. Uh, we asked uh, the public, "What does Matt Hancock do next?" Sixty seven percent of you said uh, leave the UK. Seventeen percent said get a job on GB News. Um, good station actually i quite like it and uh, 16 said 16 percent said go into hiding uh wh- where where would you lie on that twitter twitter poll i think he should go to live in greenland with all the it people who do updates <laughs> and hr those ones because we hate hr uh, as well oh and hr they're going with them yeah, so HR, who are terrible people as far as I'm concerned, if you're listening out there. <laughs> health, and safe, um, health and safety people need to be put on there as well because they're another group of strange people that make up all these policies that actually they don't need things for. Well, I think it's people who have now – I think we've got um, – basically health and safety is very good now, but what they're doing is because they haven't got anything to do, they're making things up which are a nonsense and therefore detrimental to everyone. And it's a bit like – it's the same as the updates. We don't need all those updates and we don't need – we don't need all these these processes of having to go through 
I don't know how many different stages of bureaucracy to get whatever you want done. Mm. And then, when, and, and I'm, you know, the other people who need to be sent off to Greenland, who they're the ones who say it's, um, what's the word? Poor Greenland. It's uh, confidentiality rules, you know, yeah. for serious reasons of confidentiality or the European confidentiality rules i can't remember what they're called those people normally that what they when they tell you that is not true at all they just use it as an excuse mm. not to give you information <laughs> that's what happens as far as i'm concerned anyway we can send them all off to greenland and send them supplies once a year i think that's, that's a good, that's that's a good idea too often. i was going to say send them to the amazon because that's going to be our next story but i think they'd survive quite well in the right. amazon with all the food available. No, I like the people in the Amazon. Oh, uh, okay. Yeah. yeah we don't I wouldn't want, want to bestow these people upon them. No, no, exactly. Um, can I just ask you then, um, We are. H- how long are we until the next general election? Is it about two years now? I think it's um, early 2024. Mm. Do, hey, April, I think it's something like April 2024. So I but, have, um, I have hopefully a, soon that will go before then. Mm-hmm. I have, I have a pre, uh, not a premonition, but I have a feeling that we're going to be in this sort of hung parliament situation, like we were. I think Labour will get ago. in, and I think if I make make a prediction, I think that Labour will get in, and they'll get a sufficient majority to run the country. Mm, I hope And then so. hopefully they'll reverse, they'll put in reverse some of the policies that the Tories have undertaken. Because mm. a lot of people say we've got to protect our money, so that's why we were members of the Tory party. Well, the funny thing is that the Tory party have lost everybody lots of money. So the worst party to protect your money would be the Tory party, because they're so useless. Exactly. All right. This is Strange But True Radio. He's Phil Jones. I'm Phil Keeler. Uh, We'll be back talking about the man who went missing in the Amazon and has actually now been found. Do stay with us. This is Strange But True Radio. is strange but true radio we are news talk he's phil jones i'm phil keeler uh, phil i just want to uh, discuss with you uh, very quickly before we go into our next uh, news segment uh, britain's most notorious 
uh, prisoner Charles Bronson will launch a bid for freedom at a public parole uh, hearing today. Uh, he's uh, he's now seventy. Uh, and uh, they say he uh, poses, well, he says he poses no no risk, but he's uh, deemed as a high-risk person. Um, what, what are your thoughts about releasing him after so long in, in prison? Um, I think it's necessary that people are released um, in the event that they've done their time mm. and they, they go to, they pass a parole, a parole board questioning uh, because otherwise the desperate the situation of desperation in prison is so dire yeah. that it will cause more problems than it solves in 1999 and, and, and they are tested i mean it does happen that people go out but because people yeah. people sometimes go out who shouldn't go out but then it's not a perfect world yeah i was gonna say in 1999 he held an art teacher hostage at prison for two days uh, at, at a at a whole prison apparently it didn't physically hurt him, didn't hurt him in any way, but uh, definitely traumatised him, and uh, he never went back to work after that. Um, so th- the thing is, with somebody like Bronson, he's a uh, Category A prison, so prisoner. He's been in prison yeah. for a long, all his life. He's now 70. What do you do with him? Because uh, I, I, don't, I know uh, Tom and I and the Dougals wouldn't want him uh, in a flat near me, near, near us. Well, he's 70. He's not going to be particularly strong now. Or maybe he is. I don't know. But um, mm. I just think that, well, I think that with the correct procedures in place, when you release someone, allow them to be released. I mean, there are great, there are, you know, um, Tookie Williams, after 25 years, was released. Sorry, after 25 years on death row, they murdered him um, in 2006. He, he created the uh, the bloods in los angeles and they were the rivals of the crips uh and now that's a worldwide gang those that network is all over the americas Mm. so they could have used him as an intermediary and he wrote books on don't go to prison when he he, during his time in prison he did a lot of work on reform and how um, he was trying to persuade people that it wasn't the gangland was not the way forward and despite all his work they killed him anyway yeah. Which I think is a terrible travesty. And so that as an example to give you a parallel of what how people can change uh over time uh is very important. And Bronson. it's very important that they're allowed they're given that opportunity to reform while they're in prison. Yeah. And if they show reform, then they should be allowed to be released. If they don't, then le- keep them in there. Bronson has been doing some fantastic artwork whilst in prison. Uh if you if you Google Bronson art it, uh, it's it's super i i'm gonna i might actually well actually i'm going to it's not a might it's i'm going to buy some of his artwork and uh and keep it because it is fantastic right get the latest breaking news to your phone on twitter add us using our handle at strange btr contact us uh, uh, the usual way email studio at strange but true radio.com Now then, a missing man in the Amazon has been found alive after a month. He had to eat insects and worms to survive. Uh, Jonathan Acosta, who is 30 and from Bolivia, uh, became separated from his friends while on a hunting trip back in January this year. At times, he had to drink his own urine and was saved by search and rescue teams after a month. Uh, Phil um, you're a man who knows the Amazon uh, well, um, and you've travelled it extensively. Um, is it a place you can easily get lost? Oh, very much so. But if you, what you do is you stay, but you stay near a river. Yeah. So you're not going to be far from a river. I shouldn't think. You just look for a river and follow that. That's how you. That's what you do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But there's something I'm slightly suspicious of drinking his own urine because I don't. There's plenty of water in and around the Amazon. I don't know why you would resort to that. But I also don't know why the article says there was a tiger lurking in the background. There are no tigers in the Amazon. That's what that's the article what says. Oh, there was a tiger there. So that's an amazing. They've discovered a tiger in the Amazon for the first <laughs> time. That's CBS News reporting that as well, isn't it? It's terrible. Yeah. 
Um, so what? It, so what is correct and what isn't? Okay, the guy was probably out there for thirty days. Um, they probably threw in. Oh, let's have a. We'll, we'll tell everybody that he drank his own urine. He's going. I never did that. Anyway, tiger. What tiger? They live f- in India. He had to fight Asia, a pig, you- though. Had to fight huh? a pig. He had to fight a pig. Apparently. Oh right, yeah, sure he did. <laughs> that I'm sure that happened. Have Pigs you ever had to fight away. strange things no. in the Amazon? Sorry. Have you ever had to fight strange things in the Amazon? No. Um. Oh, to be honest with you, the <laughs> worst thing in the Amazon are the mosquitoes. They're terrible. You can they'll sting you through your socks. You can put you can put um, anti insect repellent on your skin on your feet. You can put socks on top of that. It can be DEET. DEET is really powerful. Deet. It's horrible stuff. Oh, anyway, you deet. put that on your clothes so it doesn't get you, and you put it on your skin so it get. Anyway, they'll bite you through your socks. The other horrible thing They're in horrible the Amazon thing. rainforest, Phil's told me everybody is the is the minuscule um, sort of thing that lives in the in the river that goes up your japai. And uh, can it kill you? <laughs> and you can, can we say Japai? On, I think it's called can, a candy roo. It's called a candy roo, and it swims up your penis. Lovely. And then it's got these 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 spines that come out. It lodges in your penis, and then you have you have to cut your penis off to get it out, or or do surgery on your penis to get it out, which they have done. I mean, a lad. There was an eight-year-old boy was uh, died as a consequence of that a couple of years before I before I got to the Am- to stay with the Yaras tribe in 2015. They told me this story about a young lad, but it's not common for this to happen. And there are there, I've read another article how how this happened to a man, and he they managed to extract this nasty little bastard from his penis by through surgery. Not yeah. a pleasant experience, but generally speaking, nothing to worry about. Um, I've actually swam in the River Amazon on a few occasions, and I didn't – I just wore swimming trunks and just swam about. I mean, a lot of people might get worried about that, and I was worried about it, I have to say. I remember going the first time. I, it was black water. Though I couldn't see what was in the water beneath me. And I walked down this slope into the river, into this sunken forest, and I was just swimming in black water. And I thought, well, I think every, pretty much anything in here would be more scared of me than that I'll be scared of it. And so I was okay. I mean, nothing came near me. The, the work because it's very unusual. I'm, I'm, I move in a usual, in an unusual way. If, I'm not a fish. <laughs> I'm not a normal type of food. That kind of thing. And anybody who's swimming will be something out of the ordinary in many ways. But most of the big horrible things in the in the river aren't really interested in attacking you. Piran, the chief told me that the piranha yeah. where we were were vegetarian, so I had nothing to worry about. Oh, and I thought, oh right, okay. Was he Because a lot of the time joking? they do eat berries the berries that fall from the trees into the water they'll oh, eat okay. them if they've got sufficient food they won't necessarily go after anything they prefer to eat dead animals dead dead stuff in the river rather than live stuff in the river although a piranha obviously can eat people alive because that has happened um but generally speaking they stay away from you um nasty little buggers though anyway but apart from that the other thing that is of some concern is the um, electric fish, the uh, or electric eels. I'm not sure if they're eels or fish. Anyway, they produce a huge charge, a massive charge that can knock you out. So that's quite dangerous because if you're swimming in the river and you, you touch one of those, it will knock you. It could knock you unconscious and then you'll drown. But generally speaking, these these creatures stay away from you. They're not really that interested in you. I mean, you do get massive anaconda that take women. And people, women yeah. and men, obviously, yeah, yeah. and kids sometimes. Anacondas have been known to take children. They're so big. I mean, they can be 10 meters long and the width of a person. So they're, they're just massive things. So they'll just come up out of the water and take you away. See, I think if I got lost in the Amazon, I would pretty much give up straight away because I'm I'm rubbish. At, I, I would be rubbish at it. I couldn't drink my own urine. I couldn't, I couldn't eat insects. I think I would strip off naked and just lie there and and let nature take its course no you wouldn't you'd get desperately hungry and your instinct would take over i'm sh- i assure you i don't think you you wouldn't you'd just start to you you you'd do what you could to survive mm. that's what i that's what i think you would i mean it's you know even the insect bites you get used to the insect bites 
So although they're not pleasant, you do get used to it. There are and there are some creepy crawlies. There there are creepy crawlies and all manner of things in the jungle that you really don't want to confront. I mean, the most dangerous being the jaguar. I would have thought you you want to stay away from them because they will eat you. Um, as far as pigs are concerned, pigs will run away from you. Generally speaking, they don't want to be involved because they're not an animal which generally eats meat in its natural course. I mean, they do eat meat. But they won't attack a human for to 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 eat. So why would a pig attack you? It wouldn't. It no. would run away. No, exactly. Um, so um, Phil, you've obviously uh, travelled uh, extensively through the Amazon rainforest. You have a you have a book out, don't you? I do. Yes, it's called Maybe Not Wednesday. Maybe not Wednesday, and you can find um, it on Amazon. It's all about your travels up the Amazon rainforest. How old it's, were you? Yeah, it's a journal. It's a journal of my journey in the footsteps of Francisco de Orellana, who's the first known European to navigate the entire length of the Amazon. He started in a place called Coca in Ecuador, and he went down. I believe it was the Rio Napo, and that then that uh, joins the Amazon proper at a town called Francisco de Orellana, believe it or not. And um, then it, then it ca- I carried on all the way to the Atlantic coast in Brazil in a place called Belém, and that was the end of the journey, but they gave me the wrong return ticket. It was supposed to be from um, San Salvador, Brazil, and oh, sorry, El Salvador, Brazil, which is a town on the coast, on the Atlantic coast. I was going to spend a month there and then return. And what happened was they got me a return ticket from San Salvador, El Salvador. So I had to go north. I, went, I winged it. I went over sea, over land and across the sea and managed to get to El Salvador in time for my flight home, wow. which is quite a dangerous endeavor. In fact, it wow. turned out to be quite hairy on occasion, but I survived. Amazing. And, um, it's in the story. And you go out there periodically and because you made friends with lots of the locals, haven't you? I have very good friends in Peru. Um, and I could go back to see the Yaris tribe any time I wanted because I did go back in 2018 yeah. and they gave me bed and breakfast. They're so very nice. Very nice people. I spent a month in Peru recently, as you probably are aware, yeah. and um, stayed with my friends during the civil unrest, which is quite an interesting experience. I bet. All right. Oh, it's always good. I I love talking about the Amazon rainforest, as you can imagine. Uh, We always uh, cover things, uh, things like that in our show. Always interesting. Uh, Thank you, as always, uh, Phil. That's it for this edition of Strange But True Radio News Talk for a mixed up generation with him, Philip Jones, and myself, Philip Keeler. Uh, Join us for a new podcast available to download every Monday. Take care of yourselves. We'll see you next week. We are not responsible for your behaviour. We believe in common sense. We need a new government as soon as we can. No, 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 no crisis, no.